Look at the way that they perfectly just circled. No, no. Oh God. Okay, ruin the formation. But welcome back, folks. This is the Outback Octagon 2 preview. These guys are practicing for the upcoming tournament that is being hosted by Aussie Drongo, a $30,000 free-for-all tournament. It has a custom set of rules, a nice little UI, as you can see across the top. And uh, we are getting eyeballs on with BC in the crew again because BC has been practicing a bunch of these. A lot of familiar faces coming in. We've seen Kalp already here. We've seen Donati. Uh, Core was there before. And now we're adding in the Canadian bros. You've got both Puppy Paul, who's David Kim, as well as Wham03. That's Wham01. And then, of course, uh, Voldemar is going to be joining in this one, playing as the Ottomans. And hold on. Now, this is more blue than you'll find in an Eiffel 65 album right now. Like, <laughs> Are you seeing this, guys? Mongol French, Mongol French, Mongol French. This is this is random, by the way. They've randomized their sieves, but apparently three quarters of the lobby decided they want to just like be in the blue category. Outside that, Vodemar is going to be the Ottomans. We have got Wham on the English, but that's a lot of Mongol in a game like this. Now, Mongols are kind of a, a double-edged sword in this game mode, because remember that this custom format for the Mega Round Free-For-All tournament, it, it integrates Regicide. So each player starts with a king, as well as three villages split up across the map. And after a three-minute peace treaty, you can gun for that king. And he only has 200 health, he doesn't move very fast, and he definitely doesn't defend himself. So the problem with playing Mongols is you, know, you don't have uh, as strong of a defense format, especially in the mid-game, right? Other civs can wall themselves in. Other civs can build into castles. You're stuck with a town center that's always going to be the best place to store your leader. And uh, the awkward part is that you can't even rely on secondary TCs, right? They're only going to be 2,400 HP, 2,500 HP. There's just simply no better option than your starting TC when you play as the Mongols. You can't even do cheesy things like cutting through a tree line and walling yourself in because the, the Mongols don't have walls. And by the way, can, can I just highlight how confusing it is for the Mongols to have a king? What about the Khan? What's happening there, guys? There's some weird kind of... Um, Dynastic indiscrepancies happening in the, the Empire these days, I guess. But we did mention a bunch of the players coming in. Kalpa has already settled on the edge of the map. A decent location here. Uvu right next to the stone, uh, on the stone outcrop, right next to the TC. He has got deer right behind him in a fat wood line. Gold is a bit far away, but no one's likely to contest that in the early game. Meanwhile, north side, we did see Kor immediately park himself here. Double gold vein plus a stone out. On the edge of the map, Core finds this got a juicy tender to, to munch down on. Not that, just that, guys. He's got double deer stack, and he's got all the fishing next to him. Like, th there's no way anyone got a better start than this. There, there, there's absolutely positively no way anyone got a better start than this. Uh, we, we look across at Voldemar playing the Obmans. Yeah, he, he's just, eh, right? He got the goal, he got the stone. That's not too bad. Uh, then we move across to... The cluster duck corner. Don Arty is going to be on the shoreline here with his TC drop. Gold is very far away. This is a dangerous position for Arty to position himself in, especially considering not far away we have got Crackdy on the Mongols in teal, who did get a good starting position as well. Gold behind him has got the fat stone outcropping right next to the TC. Could even think about you know if he wants to take a slower start, double villager production is a potential option here, especially with so much stone that he's going to be banking over time. Then just south of him, we have got Beastie playing as the French in the pink. Me? And I don't know about this starting location, Beastie. I mean, wood lines aren't that close. They're not that big either. Hasn't got a deer stack nearby. He has at least got his goal, but Stone is also far out there. So not the easiest of starting locations, especially if some aggro comes in uh, in the early game. And then, of course, as we move south, we can see Poppy Poor. That's David Kim. Poppy Poor is David Kim. Uh, he got a close stone gold. Once again, has that wood issue, though. A little bit better than what BC was able to start with because he has got the, the stone very close to him. Um, yeah, not the best wood options, but actually, if you play this backside, you know, it's kind of a natural choke point, so that could be beneficial for the pop people. And then, rounding out in the south, we have got Wham on the English. In the orange, and his position's not too bad here, right? He's got plenty of small wood pockets. Gold close by. Obviously, the English don't really need farms as much. It would be nice. Uh, they don't need deer rather as much because they can just go farms. It would be nice to have deer just because in the early game it's better. But 
with this much wood, getting into that farm stack shouldn't be too difficult. His position is a bit tenuous as the game goes on. Like, it's a very open area of the map. I don't really think there is as many secluded areas of this generation, right? The only somewhat defendable location is probably the center of the map, but that doesn't feel right to say in the first place. Outside that, you would have had to have played for a full corner, which, as we can see, these corners outside the north one didn't really spawn with much. Um, wouldn't be surprised if Voldemar tries to actually push north with this generation. There's a lot of resources up here, the gold, the stone. He can also start to wall himself in, maybe kind of create a castle within a castle in that top northern corner. It'll be very hard for anyone to penetrate. Also, Core's location is really good. Like, Core, it's not just the resource, it's the generation of the, the water that has probably given him the best defendable location out of the gate. Right, we can talk about Kalp's location, but like Kalp can never wall this off, right? So there's, there's only so much you can do with this. Uh, but Core, you know, he's got some natural kind of wall off via this mountain. I mean, this cliff is kind of absurd. It almost covers half the distance. He can easily wall the rest. And even if you try to approach up river, you know, he could eventually just drop a keep here on the left side. It just won't be accessible. And now, cool. Interesting enough, because this wood is so far away, he can't think about going fishing. That's the one downside with this this point he's taken, right? Is you know, outside a few straggler trees in the stealth forest, there's, there's simply no wood supply nearby. So getting into fishing is going to be delayed. And looks like Core isn't going to try to contest. Crackney is, of course, already on the river and likely going to be able to be ahead of him when it comes to a transition. So instead, he's going to go for his own lake, uncontested. And it makes a lot of sense, by the way, folks. Even if Core felt he could tech up faster, the problem you have is killing this dock. It would be very easy for Crackety upon tech up, especially as a sieve like the Mongols, who generate stone passively, to just get into this emplacement. Right? And once that naval arrow slits there, you, you, you can't fight Navy at all. Sweet Crackety. Very delayed going into this outcropping. He's going to be going with the deer stone, though, so no intent to go trade later on. And, and yeah, you know, I'm just looking at this generation. If you do want to trade, it's all centralized, right? And I feel like the, the big issue you have here is when you're in this type of format where losing one unit can lose you the game, going trade, it pulls resources away from uh, critical areas in a format where people are already suspicious of you because you could trade, right? We've all seen it before, Wham's trading. The moment you know someone is trading, you're going to go after them. Because the late game is just going to be too potent. Especially the Mongols, who just start to layer an outpost upon outpost with cannon emplacements. So. Instead, he chooses to kind of like just get all pressure off him. All eyes elsewhere. Because there are two Mongol players elsewhere on the map. And as we can see, Poppy Poor is going to be going to that silver tree. And Kalp also. So Crackety, the only one not engaging with the opportunity to potentially trade early on. Kalp might have a difficult time trading, though. Looking at the generation and where he has to path, you can already see that actually Wham's got an outpost down. This is not going to be a free trade route. Poppy Paul, on the other hand, does have a free trade route. He can trade immediately to the center. No one's likely to contest him. I wouldn't be surprised if he queues up two to four traders in the other game just to kind of get that started. Might want to secure closer to the trade post before doing so, though. So you see the tech up starting to come out. We're not going to see any trade from the Ottomans. I keep finding myself kind of upset about this, right? We, I can't believe I'm saying that because everyone else is trading, but it's weird that the Ottomans still to this day are never trading. It's always the Madrissa. This situation is a bit more understandable because he simply just doesn't have access to any other food source, right? Like he can be on the deer, sure, but he's not fishing. He can't supplement that way. So he needs that safe food source when the going gets tough, especially on such a, an open area to generate in. I'm trying to think like who would be the most desirable to target out because th the interesting thing about this format with the kings being exposed you mentioned like the mongols and how in the mid game they can kind of suffer because they can't defend the, the king easily um is there opportunities to snipe earlier than that because obviously if you can actually take out an opponent super early not do, only do you secure extra land and less wire in a flank there is an added benefit of being in a situation where you could rush pop cap and just swarm the next player, right? Because remember, every time you eliminate an opponent, when you snipe their king, you get an extra 50 pop cap. So 250, 300, what have you. It's a very potent thing to have, especially once you reach, like, I want to say 25, 30 minutes in these type of formats because of how much people eco-boom in the early game. 
No trade from the north. So Corey's actually just going to be going for the School of Cavalry. I like this choice. Like, Chamber of Commerce is just dog crap. I, I would never recommend it. Uh, the value of School of Cavalry, especially if you think you're going late game, is that you are getting a perma 20% reduction to production rates on all your sales across the board. It, it's actually pretty insane. And, you know, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. As long as the, this is the only way you can access that production speed increase, I don't see a world in which Chamber of Commerce takes over. If they made this tech available in Imperial Age, right, this ability, let's say you just research it for, I don't know, even a thousand resources, you can get that extra 20% production speed on all stables. I actually think there's going to be builds where Chamber of Commerce can kind of exist. But as it stands, no bueno. It's, it's always got to be the stables. Oh, beastie. He goes out already. He went for the Chamber of Commerce build. Oh, man. I did not expect it that quick. We were then checking in over here. Puppy Paul was mounting an early assault. Wow, that's frustrating. I mean... I think what happened here is BC realized that there's no room north or south, right? The pressure came in. Puppy Paul yoinked away the deer stack, so he's forced onto berries. That was already bad enough. But then you add in the fact that he doesn't return many sheep, and he checks north, has small wood lines, and is blocked there by Crackly as well. I mean, you're in a Mongol sandwich here, okay? And uh, Beastie isn't quite meaty enough to hold his own in that format. So he'll go out early. Now, this is great for Puppy Paul because he postured an early force. He could just choose to torch down these buildings, get paid. I think instead he's just going to leave it. This is one of the situations where actually getting like the upgrade on the, the burn, right? Getting the extra bounty is worth it. Obviously, you have to get much later in the game, but if no one else is going to take these buildings, you know you'll eventually get there, and it will pay big stone. So for the time being, he moves further north. He will look to target out Crackity. Crackity who? <laughs> Crackity, come on. This is not the 1v1s. I mean, it's a familiar sight if anyone has watched Crackity's gameplay. Town centers, this guy thrives on them. He's already getting to the second one. Same can be said for Voldemar. Voldemar on the north side is already the Ottomans getting into multi TCs. In the meantime, Core is going to be booming up into Castle Age. And it's going to be the Guild Hall, so Galatnus Boy is going to have a, a nice late game here. But no, this is not pre recorded. Well, the, the game has already been played out. These are not pre recorded. We are casting these live from our perspective. These games were played yesterday by the pros. And what? Cow! Damn! Already up to three TCs. And has he been allowed to trade this whole time? Oh, wow, he has. I am very surprised Wham didn't stop this with just an arrow slits and placement. Or just a single archer ship. But apparently Wham doesn't want any problems, right? He's, he's like, hands up. He's like, yo, I, I ain't reaching for my six shooter here, all right? Don't do the same. So kind of a piece there, right? Like a, an untalked piece, right? We are not going to get in the way of each other. Okay, I spoke too soon. Wham has finally realized what's happening here. And he's getting into the archer ships. So going to be a nuisance for Kalp. Kalp has a problem here. He ran out of food, so he has to set up pashes. He's gone free TC. He doesn't really have the economy to now build units to contest this blocker. I think he just might have to give up the trade. Especially if more players decide to party on the other side. Ooh, Hardy. He actually, did he go for the chamber? No, thank goodness. I prefer this. So he went for the School of Cavalry. We should really talk about this build coming out from Beastie, by the way. Chamber of Commerce. I remember I had my opinions on this. I didn't think the Chamber of Commerce was was good enough with the changes to like make it desirable. I remember listening to Beastie's take about like just essentially generating free trade over time. I think it's too slow still though, right? Like compared to something like the Abbasid trade win that gives you an immediate booster. And once again, especially in this format, in a free-for-all that you know can go 40, 50 minutes plus, I, I just don't think you can give up the School of Cavalry. That reproduction rate is just absurdly potent when you've got pop cap issues, right? Where you want to wipe an army and rebuild it instantly. And make no mistake about it, folks. If they ever make a change so that you can't queue production at pop cap, right? So like, for example, you know when you're pop capped, you can still fill up and then when you lose units, they'll immediately like, just spawn out. If they ever fix that, I think you're going to see a situation where, I don't, I'm not going to say the French are going to become S tier, but they will uh, be one of the big benefactors of it. 
right, via the late game cavalry spams. They're still going to be underwhelming overall from the eco side, but it will improve their late game. This trade attempt. <laughs> I love this from, from Poppy Boy. He's like, well, he's dead, but not useless. He's going to trade with him. But Crackity is contesting that and also setting up the outpost, so he's not going to make it easy. Remember, Crackity did not go for trade at all. He went for the Deer Stone, so no intent of doing so. He's playing multi TCs. Speaking of multi TCs, Voldemar already up to three. You could maybe even think about going for a Fort Fear. Plenty of stone behind you. I think Voldemar probably has the one of the safest positions alongside Core. I don't think Core wants to fight anytime soon, right? He wants to insulate himself. And he's got the resources to do so. He's even got two relics. We didn't even talk about that detail. All the other things there. Two relics on top of it. This is... Quite frankly, this is one of the most absurd edge spawns I've ever seen in Mega Random. I I think Core may have flirted with and sent gifts to one of the developers. I think Bidolin has uh, received a bribe or something. Like that. I know he didn't make Mega Random, but someone's happened here. His dad must work at Microsoft. Very, very slow start here, though. After the initial aggression of Beastie, like you're seeing contesting over trade a little bit, but you know, most of these players just simply want to boom. I think the only player who isn't just fixated on booming, like Puppy Paw got some early raids in, but he that was to enable trade, right? I think it's Puppy Paw and, and Crackity that are kind of interested in fighting, and everyone else has just been chill. But now that we've started reaching a castle age, I think that might start to change a little wham. He's starting to push out the knights, and he's going to be doing so in mass. He can just be the trade king, right? He won't be able to do it himself, but he'll be able to choose who gets a, who gets a license to trade. I think Kalp is going to have to get a defense force up soon. Oh, is he? He's going to go into Lancers here. I I would say this is a very bold choice by Kalp, considering like he's not ahead on production. Usually when a player is behind on tech up speed like this, they want to add in Spears. I, I see problems in his future. Like, if he can hold off the initial raids, I think he's strong here. Because remember that Wham, although he's got fishing, he's still 2TC as well, compared to Kalp, who went 4TC. Uh, but for now, like, th there's going to be a lot of bullying and a lot of pain for Kalp. Kalp can, of course, afford to hemorrhage some villages. Can't afford it long term. I think I feel that sting. Especially as the upgrades start to come through. I believe Wham should have the blacksmiths dropped. Hasn't started getting into the undermesh yet, but once that's there, these knights will dive unlimited. Like I said, remember, he has got fishing to the side of this. Also, as the game goes on, you're going to see the English player switch into farms when they really become boosted, which is around now into Imperial Age. This is the point where you start to realize there's a lot more desirability behind the farms compared to the fishing. But that isn't an issue you're going to have to truly worry about until you reach Popcap, which, as we stand, Wham's only halfway there. Voldemort now being threatened. Look at this move coming in. Don't I? Aggro is switched up. Now, oh, no, the king's in here. Voldemort has no way of getting out. The Janissaries are just being ignored. The men at arm spam from Donati. There is simply no way you can get out of this, right? The king, he has one opportunity. He can shift north. It is only... In arms at the moment. If he times this right and snipes out the knight, he can make his escape. His head looks like Voldemort is just going to hold inside. He actually distracts long enough that the men at arms have to stop targeting the TC. But the Congo line of death is never ending here. Don Arty. It's like a dog with a bone. And that bone is admittedly still attached to Voldemort's body, but it's not going to stop him from ripping it clean. Crossbow Mass is coming, so Voldemort maybe has an opportunity to stop this. The repair crew also uninterrupted in their activities. I think Don Arty, I, I'm, I'm not convinced the window's there anymore. Like, crossbow count, how high are we? Once we reach past 10, that's, that's the end of the plan. So he's got a very small window to make this work. And the fact that he never took out the repair crew, I think is going to be his downfall here. So Arty... Unable to make it happen. Luckily for him, Crackity is not interested in making ha things happen back at home. But you have just made an enemy. And that enemy is likely to come back at you with assisted passive production in Castle Age. Remember, this is one of the Ottomans' strongest points in the game. 
Luckily for Don Ali, he does have something to supplement him to keep up with all this, right? He has, of course, been trading, and on top of that, he has got all the fishing. In fact, this was an absurd amount of deep water fish. So I don't think Artie's going to get pushed anytime soon. But if Crackity does decide to join in the party, it could be problem town. Luckily for Don Ali, Crackity has uh, other goals in mind. This guy's been watching too much Highlander. He says there can be only one. It's time to get down to business with Poppy Paw. Remember what we said about the Mongols, right? If you come in strong, if you swipe them immediately, like that, they have no way to hide that king. He's always going to be in the same location. I like how they've got uh, an armored car here, right? To take Mr. President to places. A nice little SUV. <laughs> I think that's genuinely the only way you can move the uh, the king with the Mongols is you actually have to ram and get him out. Oh, good God. I don't even want to think about that. That's a horror show. Meanwhile, in the Legion of Doom, Kalp is looking a little doomed here. It looks like he did lose one of the TCs. Right? I, I believe so, yeah. So down to three TCs. Uh, he's definitely not a sci-fi move because he's, he's lacking space here. I think this is about to get grim. Wham well, could easily set up Siege in the next half a minute to a minute and just start slow blitzing this down. Now we are seeing a, a massive spears built to kind of defend this area, but remember you're playing into Lombos. Lombos with attack speed. It's not going to be uh, an easy fight to take. Especially when you consider like what, I think he did get into the Yam in the end because he picked it out of the outposts. But this is not a cruel type build, right? So you don't have the damage buff to kind of mitigate that attack speed that the English have. And that attack speed might get juiced up further. The keep is going to start being built here. That's going to force a fight. Cal has to march out now. Well, the boxing will commence. But instead, the boxing will begin. Rush forward onto the keep. Torch is being hurled. But he can't commit to it. Knights are wasting his time. Lombos is trying to snipe him down. He needs to protect these villages, though. Wham has to commit to the fight. He's got that attack speed aura. The gold vein is going to give him a choke point on the north side here. A nice attempt to wrap around, but good reaction by Wham. He minimizes the villager losses. He gets the castle up. And Kalp now at risk. His army has to retreat. Heavy losses on the way out. And after that, I don't know where you go from here. Maybe pack your king up, send him out. Oh, yeah, yeah. So let's look at the positives for Kalp. Kalp has snuck out on uh, on north. So he's got that big gold vein. He has got pretty much unlimited food and a decent amount of wood. But you are at risk, sir. Because Wham, I think he realizes where you've snuck out. This is not a free area anymore. This is going to be hotly contested. Remember, meanwhile, on the east side, we're seeing trebuchets added in. And that great villager migration, 40 on the run. Knights are going to dive in. Cannot hang around, but they really don't need to here. Remember, Kalp, this is idle villagers. This is simply doing nothing for them. Um. Notice that he doesn't rush either. Targets the second TCs, doesn't go after the primary. Just sets up more keeps, takes his time, plays with his food, if you will. Just checking what's happening elsewhere, because I don't think that this fight is going to finish too quickly. Voldemar is now starting to mount an assault towards Donati's base. Now, Donati, he has got to keep with the king in. This is not going to be an easy breach. And, and so far, Voldemar lacking siege that could break a castle. It's only a mangonel in play. Crackety still in the meantime, continuing to just ignore Donati. Instead, he's going to keep partying on the south side. Poppy pool. He's diving. I, I think you just like get siege engineering, build a few rams, and it can maybe work. But this is not going to be enough fuel for fire. I'm a little bit worried that no one's addressing core. 
the Jules uh, Lachance player who has reached up into Imperial Age. Even went up the red paths. He's now amassing knights, and now he's heading for Voldemort. <laughs> well, you survived one French storm. Can you survive two? Oh no, he just walled himself out. You can see the slow rush home. I wonder, can Core actually do this? And Kalp, he just packed up his whole base! Oh my god, the king is exposed! If the longbow's ever reached, he's just dead. That's GG. What is the plan here, Kalp? <laughs> you are sheep, and he is the dog. I must protect my people. We must escape to a new map. He's just bodyguarded with the pastures. What is missing here, folks, is a ram. One ram. Oi, oi, oi. Oh, he's walking into court. Even if he somehow survives a ram, he might just give his head over to court instead. King has been revealed. Knights reaching in. Spears are reacting, but the longbows are in range. Cow, it was a cute idea. But no dice. He will be eliminated, and Wham will net the points before he can run into the waiting arms of Core. <laughs> I f this is one of those moments where it's usually a good idea to uh, have the full plan written out before you commence, right? Waterfall approach to the production here, you know? Basically, Cap was like, what do I do? Well, I can pack my buildings up and, and move. Walks along. So what are we doing now? Let's just keep walking until we figure it out, you know? Be like Moses and the slaves, just like, moseying through the desert. We'll figure it out as we go. Oh, you're even cool, man. Look at the land he has. Wham has a, a big edge in the fact that he was able to get a kill. Uh, what happened with... Wait. Did Beastie... Okay, that that's an awkward thing. Because Beastie GG'd out without losing his king, nobody got the pop cap. I have a feeling that there might be a need for a rule that stops you from GGing out. Like, you have to wait for your king to be killed. Because even if you kill him after the fact, because you can see, like, he, he's dead, right? He's gone. Nobody got pop cap. That's a problem. Speaking of problems, Krakeny seems like he might have a few. Voldemar's distracted by Kor now, so Don Arty gets to turn his attention towards him. Poppy Paul, meanwhile, is just not interested. He's going to back away. Wham has secured the southern front entirely. He might be forced to slay his brother. Might have a little Cain and Abel story ahead of us. What I'm curious about is uh, whether Kor is going to be able to ever get through these town centers. Mass spears coming out with the meta attack speed. Very difficult to reach. Still, cease to assist this. So far, Kor is just kind of headbutting a wall at this stage. All right, let me know, chat, who is going to be next to go down? Look at the top of the screen, count them across. Wham for one, David Kim for two, Cool for three, Voldemort for four, Crackety for five, Donati for six. I'm leaning towards a Crackety death next. I don't think that Voldemort is going to break that quickly to what Core is doing here. At least by doing this, though, Core is keeping Voldemort in age three. But all I see is a situation where Crackety... There's always going to be a paranoia. He's going to have to guard in a certain way against the south side due to Puppy Paw. And Donati's army just looks better. Right? Like, his eco behind this just looks better as well. I mean, if we look at the numbers... Like, what is that? That's 4k total resources per minute. Crackety is over here with a lot of gold, but not much else, right? He's definitely behind in the overall income. Like behind an army count at this rate. Maganel is the counter out horseman. Not a good feeling. As our vet horseman... And they're just going to reach around. Brackety decides he has to stand his ground, but that's going to cost him everything here. 
Krebs can continue to wheel in. That is going to be a key drop. Hardy loves these buildings. Make sure his opponents do not. I mean, with a cleanup like that. Wait, did he? Oh my god, he's doing the count! <laughs> Wait, but the king's been left behind! Crackity, where are you going? To heaven. Pull one out for the Mongols, dude. No, no one loves the Mongols in these ones, huh? Two of the three Mongols gone, one remains. One hope for the end players. It is, of course, the one and only Poppy Paul, who is trading with a neutral trade post in the corner. He's getting a lot of bank in. I mean, it's not a WAM trading, it's a Poppy Paul trading. And I don't know if anyone knows about this other than maybe WAM. That could become problematic. Oh, it's historical. Ditch the kingdom, king dies. Dude, no, I'm, I'm telling you guys. You, you don't understand. Kalp and Crackity, they, they are smarter than all of us. They understand what happens here, okay? That guy just sitting in the TC doing nothing, that's a king, right? Mongols don't... They're not led by kings. They're led by Khans, okay? Khans who take to the battle. That's the problem here, all right? It's an identity crisis. You're playing Mongols, but you're like, why, why does my leader not attack people? That doesn't sound like a Khan. He has to die. They're simply just purging the issue here. And the issue we saw before was that Core had no way of breaking buildings. Well, he's looking to fix that now, but... <laughs> Voldemar, whether intentional or not, is body blocking these rams a lot. They're not able to get in. He's going to be able to clean up the cavalry. And this is simply not going to be enough rams to get the job done. And yes, I do see the push-ups. We do the push-ups after the game. I'm not going to do them in the middle of the game, guys. Come on. Sorry. Pekka is good enough. Rams don't do enough damage. I think Voldemar's issue is a paranoia that, that Donai is now going to come back. Like, this is the problem. I think in a one on one, this is just stalemate, really. It, it just becomes kind of like a long term resource game. And admittedly, like, I think Core has access to more because he can sneak out south side. So he could win, right, 15, 20 minutes from now. I don't think Voldemar even has 15 or 20 minutes left. And it's because of what's massing on the east side. Donna is getting ready to party. And I think he could actually beat Core to the punchline because Core is the one bogged down in the army slog now. Hardy, meanwhile, has an extra 50 pop cap to just mass and push. I wouldn't be surprised if he carts in like four trebs, moves in range, snipes out the, the TC, and then dives with the horseman. That would actually just insta kill. Whoa, 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 whoa. Trying to suggest only Voldemar gets the backseaters. Think about how many backseaters Beastie got in this one. You shouldn't have went trade. You should have built near a tree line. Ah, oh, so unfortunate though. Dude, I think he was between probably the two worst like players possible. Just because it was double Mongols, it's always going to end this way, right? It's a very hard position to get out of. Meanwhile, the other French flags are at least waving strong. Also, Wham is, by the way. <laughs> Dude, Wham is playing the campaign. Look at this. Look at the box here. He's setting up a nice little, little castle-y area. Oh, that's actually pretty. He's even got some deer in here. That's the king's deer. Do not touch them. I actually like this. Dude, Wham's playing my kind of game, you know? Anyone that ever played? Like, I remember when I was younger, I played like Red Alert 2. I was like, yeah, got to build the racks next to the road. Got to have the, the factory facing off into the parking lot. <laughs> Got a very neat base, I love it. I believe it's time though, folks, for something that any Voldy fans will not love. He's about to be Voldemarted. There is simply no way he can contest two players. The dive in's commencing. Don Artie's on the way. Awesome marching forward. Boiling all in the keeps though, that's gonna chunk away at their health here. Remember, Donati's is making this move without going up into Imperial Age. The torches are out. Knights to follow up afterwards. Siege behind it and also check this. Donati has enough for a double keep drop. He will turn his attention towards the castles instead and begin to drop his own keeps. Keeps that would block out core as well. All back away. Great response out of Voldemar. 
But now in a two on one. And it's not a friendly two on one, guys. These guys aren't working together. These are two hungry wolves that have just discovered a baby in the wilderness. Okay, that was mean and graphical, but it's, it's an accurate representation. He's a poor little bunny right now. Voldemort, he maybe gets to choose who he dies to, but that's about it. The wolves are not leaving. I don't think they're sharing either. Cool. Knows he's on the clock here. Cannot contest the keep drops. Tries to march in. Gets blocked out. Voldemort now opens up the way for Donati to go in. And go in he will. Second castle to be built up. Could even build stables behind this to keep the production queue going. Trebs are now going to be reaching in range of that town center. He does have a secondary keep to fall back on. I wonder, is Donati going to target that out first? Might be the logical choice here. Just strip Voldemar of his options, but instead he goes after the primary. Core not really finding a way in anymore. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is the worst feeling. You build all these cannons and now you don't have an army to dive with. If he times this right, he could snatch. Right, like if you wheel in, say, to the west side here, TC goes down and you bombard snipe, you could take it. But otherwise, this should be a, a scout for Artie to claim. King is going to move into the castle. The Baldy Quinn's coming out. Okay, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel, folks. I mean, he is up against Mass Melee. It's not the worst of ideas. <laughs> Voldemort's on the run. Fly, you fool. He's got a castle all the way back here. Has he actually done it? Has he scraped together more time? Maybe. Has he forced the French players to eat each other? Quite possibly. I think we've got Burgundy versus France here. I think it's only going to be a temporary war here. And they can both just ignore each other and come at it from different angles. Knights weren't able to chase down quick enough. Voldemar lives to fight another day. Meanwhile, we might not be able to say the same of Puppy Paw for long. It's the Great Migration. Now, Puppy Paw was able to get up. So he can get those premium army units, things like the Nest of Bees. And his king... Where is the king? Uh, that's a good question. Where is the king? Ah, here he is. So this is a problem. I don't think Puppy Paw is going to be talking to Wham at the family meals. Anyone else look at this and feel like this looks like trust? Betrayed? <laughs> Puppy was like, oh man, Wham hasn't killed me. I'm fine. There's no way he'd try and kill me. I'm just going to build all these outposts to protect against, like, I don't know, Donati. Donati seems like he'd want to kill me. Meanwhile, he's even recruited the sheep. This is a very English thing to do. Why would we do the fighting when we can just hire the Irish, the Welsh, and Scots to do it for us? Oh man, this is such an exposed area. Puppy Ball wishes he could have refunded those outposts and set them up this way. He could get a few laid in now. So I'm being able to mirror the armies as Wham is going to commit too hard. Now remember, Wham, he has an advantage here. An extra 50 pop cap to swing. Meanwhile, Voldemort, look at what he's swinging. Summon big. Summon long. Something that shoots. It is, of course, the Great Bombards. But it might not be good enough. Oh my god, Voldemort! <laughs> He's trying to stay alive with outpost! It's gonna work for the moment, but this is a poor man's keep. And Donati's left for the moment, but Donati's planning something. Check this, there's a weak wall. Now, he should be using trees and he should see what's up here. Newcastle's gonna be built. Court cannot get deep enough to block it. If Donati goes right now, he can punish. I think, yeah, okay, no, that, 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 it's too late. Folks, what happened here is a catastrophe. He's got to burn the wall. Oh, he's on the way, but that castle's going to be complete by the time he arrives, so he's not going to be able to kill him. Meanwhile, in the Legion of Doom, the Cain and Abel story, it seems like someone's about to eat the other. That's definitely how the real story went. I mean, this is just such a hard, a hard army to be. 
You got a nest of bees in a dream. That's your only upside right now, if you're puppy poor, is that you have nest of bees and he doesn't have any uh, any sprinkles. It's a very small upside, though. Voldemar is so for more cars. <laughs> Dude, everyone else is over here playing Age of Empires 4, and uh, Voldemar is over here playing Mario. He's playing the role of Peach. Every time a little Mario over here comes over, hoping to find the princess, it turns out she's in a different castle. I don't think Voldemar can keep playing this game for long, though. He's trying. He's munching through the stone as quick as possible. He's got one more castle in him before he runs out of resources. Actually, no. Oh, okay, in fairness, he's got two. This great bomba play is actually keeping him alive, by the way. He's building his choke points. You're actually allowing him to force this, this cluster. He's benefiting him. Meanwhile, the base of the Mongols, though. Wow. Starting to march about. Just trying to get the lay of the lands. Did throw away a lot of his army in doing this, though. I think Wham really needs a, a production base away from home. I think that's hampering his ability to react to this. I think Wham could actually go for a wonder soon. If he can eliminate Poppy Paw and then Voldemar gets removed, that's the perfect time to go for a wonder play. And he's in a much better position to do it than anyone else. You can see the amount of stone that Wham has been hoarding. Not to mention he has a very fabulous location to drop it. Donai is in again. I feel like we've been here before. Only this time, giant, very hard metal balls are smacking us in the face. Oh my. I, I wonder if going Imperial Age would have been the better way like two, three fights ago. Man, the extra hell for these chunky boys. Because he did go for Guild Hall, right? Yeah, so he didn't have the raw bloodlines at all. This is going to go up. And Voldemar is running out of space. Right, he's done a remarkable job to hold as long as he has. But I feel like things are starting to sync up a bit. You're seeing, like, Core, he went into siege to blow up all the buildings. So they're rapidly blitzing through the base. And also, like, the timings between Donai's attack and Core's attack are a bit more synchronized than they were before. And there's just really nowhere left to go, right? Voldemar, I mean, he's at negative wood income. The moment he loses these great bombards, it's over. Meanwhile, Wham land. <laughs> Take the slower approach this time, get that attack speed aura. Oh, but the march in. Corey sees his opportunity. That's a great pinch there. Gets his hand on uh, almost all the bombards. One of them almost gets away. Remember what we said, the moment these get cleaned up, that, that's just GG for Voldemar. <laughs> but it's not going to stop him from unlocking World 8 in Mario World. Don't know if it's really going to do much for him. But I know he has completely peeled back for the moment, but I think that's because he's waiting on the, the tech upgrades to come through. Yeah, his horsemen haven't been upgraded yet. So I'm saying the Mongols aren't very good in this game mode. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't write them off. The reason why Mongols don't look good in this game mode is because people are targeting them out early, and that's why. Is because in the late game, they're strong. They can get loads of these outposts up cannon placements. It's very hard to dive past those to get into the TC. Now, there is an argument that, like, that is kind of predictable, right? You don't have walls to rely upon, yada, yada, yada. And you could be susceptible to, like, cavalry spam. But if you have enough outposts, which we've seen plenty of games where the Mongols get to that point in the game, it, it, it feels impossible to breach them. So I wouldn't write off Mongols. Um, especially considering the early game aggro, right? Consider what happened to Beastie, those type of situations where you're able to field a, an efficient army in, in Dark Field Age and it's worth sniping out a king early on, that could give Mongols the, the leg up to move into the late game. Especially when you combo that with the potential for trade. All right, time to unlock World Knight. <laughs> Voldemar, like this is the right play, by the way. In the Outback Octagon format, remember, there's going to be points based on placement. So trying to last longer is worthwhile, right? He knows he's dead. He just doesn't want to die before someone else potentially does. The worst villain. Gotta get them placement points. Meanwhile, land of the Mongols. There's a migration. The king of the TC on the move. He actually snuck out. So Poppy Port repels Wham. 
and now he moves to the other side of his outpost line. These, now, these haven't all been upgraded with cannons. I think he's got like maybe one or two max. Puppy Ball simply doesn't have the stone to upgrade more. And but he's coming for him. Oh, he may have just robbed Wham of a kill, but he just rewarded Donati with one. This marching could tear him down. And he knows exactly where to go. Donati, he triggers the treason. He sees the TC. Wham, he just burnt his army. He can't go in. Folks, these are bloodline cavalry units. They are not going to die fast, even the spearmen. Body blocks. Puppy Port needs to prevent him. Needs to bait him with the pathfinding. And he might have done it. This is looking like a bit of a panic. Donati not going the right way to get on top of the TC. They're just rubbing up against each other. They're headbutting the problem. Is he trying to attack the Maganel? Oh my god, he is. <laughs> Where's the king? He's in that outpost. That's why he's trying to go for the outpost. Puppy poor. He may have just baited him with that play. It looked wonky at first. It looked like he was trying to get the Maganels, but instead, Donati was just trying to click for the king. And instead, he might have just given an opportunity for someone else to reach in. Wham! Trying to come in now. Just a few men arms. Outpost down to half HP. Remember the Lombos, if they get the opportunity, they will insta snipe the King out. And it's going to be Torch now. Who can get the click faster? King? Can he get sniped? Longbow shots in. It's not quite enough. He stays alive. 29 HP into the TC. He will never see sunlight again. Woo. That King just became a true basement gamer. Oh my good God. Wham, he almost had it, he could taste it. The longbows got cleaned up just a bit too fast. Artie almost paved the way perfectly. In the meantime, Voldemar has been finished off. He got chased down into the corner and cut down where he stood. So Court will net himself an extra 50 pop cap. Meanwhile, this extra 50 pop cap up for grabs remains ungrabbed. And this is going to be uh, a fairly long reset. That was pretty much everything that Wham had to throw at it. So Donut is going to have to come at this fight on his own. He's going to have to damn well hope that Core doesn't interfere by going after his home. Because that should be Core's most logical target next, right? Either that or you start targeting in the south to Wham. But that's a, that's a long way off and they're both stonewalled up. So I think they're going to have a kind of untalked about peacetime going on there. Peace time between the English and French? That doesn't sound like history at all. Donati. <laughs> these, these rams are actually really annoying. They're just body blockers. They're very fat body blockers as well. You just can't easily get around them. I think Donati's missed the window and he knows it. Like, if he goes in now, there's just a risk a backstab comes in. It'll be a hard hit in one. Puppy Paul is just a rat right now, man. <laughs> He's like, well, I'm not going to kill anyone, right? But I'll be damned if I'm going to get killed. Oh, wow. I'm continuing to just carve out territory, right? Like, uh, there's a like, decent amount of stone left in this map. Maybe he just considers adding even more stone wall layers. Wow, I'm still waiting. He's waiting for his brother to drop because the moment it's a two on one, especially if you get the kill, uh, you can just go for wonder. The problem Core has here is if he weakens Donati, Wham gets the game. Right. But the problem is he doesn't know how strong Wham is. This is where communication is really key. Puppy Paw should be the one able to tell, but would you trust Puppy Paw if he starts saying, you know, Wham is his strongest here? Like Wham, like you know, he definitely is, is gonna be going for a one to Right? His position is too good to not. Or would you just think that he's begging for his life, right? He'd say anything to live another day. You just can't trust him, right? This is the awkwardness, the, the, the trust issues. And some of that Wham's done brilliantly to enable this awkward situation is the way he's walled off the sides so wide. Like there's no easy way to peer in and see what's happening uh, in the belly of the beast. So it's dead caught. Cool. Starts to cripple Donai. 
Poppy Paul, meanwhile, gets the vibe in the corner. Passively getting a premium army as we go with the Carnot Palace. An opportunity to kill outright for Core. An opportunity to shrink his opponent. And meanwhile, look at this. A little snake in. Puppy Paul did try to get around the back, but it's going to be a red keep. Not easy to assault, so it'll be a failed attempt. But that does mean you're surrendering a lot of your base over to Core. And while this one instantly loses the game, it's going to lose you a, a lot of production, a lot of ego. Oh, this is such a frustrating position to be in. If you're uh, if you're Donai and you know it. Puppy Paul has to gun for you. You're the closest player. You also got to be a bit paranoid about what Wham is doing. Wham is also on the way to Donai's base. Oh, the dynamics of this are so infuriating for RT. Cool's logical target to fight is RT because they both fought over Voldemar, right? Meanwhile, Wham's most logical target to fight because he can't get the kill on Puppy Paul is Don Arty because he's the one he's racing for to kill off the Mongols. So Don Arty, because of the, the attempts he made north and south, he simply just crowned himself as the guy to be killed. Scores be damned. It just doesn't matter. The dynamics of this, the fact that, that both players have information on him means that he's the simplest choice that they can make right now. It's not just that you're dealing with two players that can commit on you and be a nuisance. This is one little little rodent, little cockroach on the side that might just wiggle out and be a pain in the ass as well. Even if he doesn't do real damage, if he distracts, say, 30, 40 your pop cap, that's still an edge that Core then has in a 250 versus 250 situation. Oh, man. You hate to play these type of games to be in this position. Wham's had enough, though. He's not waiting around anymore. Now, keep in mind why Wham is doing this. It's the paranoia that if he doesn't, someone else could. And this is a good read. Look what Core had been hoarding. 10k stone. So it was now and ever. If Wham waited any longer, it actually would have been Core who got into the wonder. And we already talked about his brilliant position to do so. Instead, they now have to come and play in Wham's campaign map. <laughs> I still love this space. This is probably my favorite base I've seen made in uh, a Mega Random. It actually looks like so, like it could be like the White Cliffs of Dover type moment, right? With the the water side, obviously we're missing the mountains, but that kind of feeling like we're English. We've uh, we've got a coastline to defend. Probably not defensively accurate to put the the most important building right next to the the water side, but we're not totally replicating history here. We are getting it mass arch range. Logical choice. He's got the walls. He could think about going hand cannoneers here, even the Lombos. By the way, I love how the UI is off to the side here. That's <laughs> There's so many UI bugs this year in the AOE 4. It's unfortunate. So, wonder on the way. TikTok will go the clock. How far away? 14 minutes out from a wonder victory. I, I'm i not sure if you wanted to be the guy doing it, though. Like we, I mentioned why I had to, that Corv was going to do it otherwise, but... It's only worked if Donati is eliminated. I, I think that Wham assumed that Donati was dying, right? When he marched in, he saw the big armies contested in, in Donati's base. Maybe he's like, okay, I think he's dying soon. So this is like the best time because if I wait any longer, Core's going to start building the wonder after he kills this person. But because Core didn't finish Donati and in fact didn't munch deep enough into his base that he really got hurt, You've got this awkward situation now where you have to defend against two very strong French players with mass cavalry in the late game. And let's not forget the Mongol player that has been building very slowly, but freely, Hui Hui Pals. Yeah, we're going to see some, uh, some ground gained here. Especially considering that Wham didn't go for cavalry. It's kind of unfortunate. Like, you want to be men at arms here. But if you had cavalry, you could come out and, and dent these forces before they reach your base. When you play men at arms Lombos with this type of configuration, with the flank so exposed, I think the only option available to Wham is to, to sit and wait for them to come to him. More walls going up in the meantime for Wham. Good read here. There was a risk that they could have went upriver. Remember, Corp, he's been on the river as well. And that would snake you all the way down to where the wonder is. In fact, if he didn't make this play and I was in this game, my play would have been to pack a few cannons into a transport ship, wheel them all the way up river 
and then just unpack them here and immediately snipe out the, the computer of St. Thomas, which is very doable. Like the bombard range, it would allow you from the shore. So good read by him to eliminate that threat. I think he would have been better off actually originally setting up the Cathedral of St. Thomas on the east side here for that reason especially. But he covers it nonetheless. The horse has also uh, blocked out the crossing for call. So he's going to delay him as he breaches through. Meanwhile, Don Arty is on the way. and Oh my Rohirrim. That is a lot of horses. He's got 100, like 211 cavalry. <laughs> Don't I just like, cool, open the gate and I shall welcome myself in. That's definitely going to be Core's goal here, right? He's got nine of these cannons. It's ironic from the jump because that's exactly what Wham is going to be screaming. Well, it would be if he was German himself. And while Poppy Paul. Slowly making his way through. He's got the BP piles. This is going to be a pain in the ass. The problem you have here is like you have to spread yourself in already because your eco is going to be exposed on the left and uh, right side. You're probably just going to have to forfeit a bunch of your farms as Puppy Paul pushes in. Wham does have enough food to do so. He's going to sting his gold income a bit. And it's also kind of like you know, the houses situation. Like You haven't built additional houses behind this. You are a 250 pop cap player. Remember, you have to build extra houses for the additional pop cap. Look at where all these houses are situated. If I come in here and I'm Poppy Paul, I snipe the houses. Because I don't think he, like, you know, who would actually build, like, 20, 30 houses back here? Most players just simply will not. As he breaks through the wall. Wow, makes a break for the west side. He's contesting this area. One benefit for him is the fact that Don Arty is still circling in the same area as Cool. Because Don Arty is a cheapskate, ladies and gentlemen. Don Arty did not want to bring Siege. It's like, no, I'm the guy you need Siege for. I'm the guy that, that rushes you with outposts and keeps. Why, oh why, would I have Siege? Well, Wham will begin to feel the pain. This Poppy Boar is getting in there. Not talking out the houses, though, interestingly enough. Carracks are on the way, so cool. He really is being, bringing the big boys in. Donati needs to be a little bit careful here because these are going to open fire on him when he gets too close, so he wants to stay away from the shore. You can guarantee for sure they have plenty of time to reach in here. I don't see a world in which Wham completes this wonder victory. I mean, nine minutes away. His army just doesn't look big enough because he has to contest in his base what's happening over here. I'll be poor. He's at risk, though. He needs to wheel those creepy part away, if anything. He never went for the houses. It's hard to know, right? We have God Vision. So often you just assume a player will reboot houses behind this, but I think that the, the full process for me here is there's so much pressure on Wham. The housing is an easy thing to overlook until you're housed. So it would have been a golden opportunity. Oh, well. Golden opportunity to strike in the meantime, because look who's arrived. Don I. Gets through here, man. Army is going to be cleaned up. Wham, well, of course, is still at pop cap straight away due to all the production buildings. But a hard fight ahead of him. He actually has to hold here. If he allows these cannons to wheel up, I'm almost certain they're going to be in range to, to snipe out the wonder. Maybe not all of them, maybe three max. But I mean, you've got a bigger problem, right? The characters. If the characters just get down here, they can do the business just as quickly. Especially with all the bonus damage against buildings. A bonus damage, by the way, can make it very hard for the outpost to last, but good lord, the return fire there. Cool may have gotten ahead of himself a little. Bombards. I'm going to move in. Are there cannon placements here? No cannon placements. That was simply just shattering projectile trebuchets. Great read by Wham. If he gets in range with them here, actually, serious damage could be done to the cavalry force. Instead, though, he goes after the bombards. Ball's going to break soon. Bam, trying to hold the crossing. Men at arms are going to flesh out. The horsemen not able to contest. Meanwhile, Northern Front still has an assault incoming. More units being pushed by Puppy Paul. Puppy Paul, looking like he might have a slight edge here due to the premium. He's got Spearman in there. He's got a bunch of pass guard laying in as well. Wee Wee Pow must be protected forever. Western Front is going to hold for Wham. 
Karax have to fully reset, just too threatened by the trebuchets. Now, if there's a misclick by Wham and he moves out too far with these, the Karax could get their vengeance. But they need a distraction for that to work. Right now, Wham simply is not distracted. <laughs> oh no, it's exactly what I talked about. <laughs> That is not a friendship. Oh, God. This is what I mean. The Karaks don't care, guys. They will simply open fire. There's no way to stop them. Just hemorrhage in like 20 plus cavalry units there due to the Karaks. And uh, more Karaks on the way from Core. His entire army is just becoming Navy. Trebs to make his life hell. So if Wham just micros this correctly, he can snipe out two Karaks each time. Actually, I think he needs one more trebuchet for that. So this might be just the go time. Like the awkward part is you haven't these these aren't the the scroll ships, right? They don't set sail faster. So the moment you start moving in, you're going to be seen doing it. It's very difficult. Karaks are at least going to clean up more walls, but they can really do right now. Wow! I, mean, I said I don't think he can do it, but he's finding a way. If he rebuilds these walls, because he's about to get the Huey Pal. Yeah, take the Wii Pal, then rebuild the walls, and all of a sudden, Plumbing Boar is useless. It's not a nice thing to say, but it is very true. Plumbing Boar is not making it easy to get on top of those trebuchets, so we'll be able to pack them up, wheel them away. The problem now for Wham is if he chases us any further, Plumbing Boar can communicate that, and the other two can come in on the west side. I do believe this is... Yeah, this is the dual die army from Donati. He understands that he's on the clock. He can't afford these cheap, crappy horsemen anymore. It's time to send in uh, the shiny helmets. The guys that actually get paid in, in big gold and estates in the Empire. It's time for the knights. <laughs> Wait, is Puppy Paul snaked it? <laughs> he's actually snaked it. Okay, so this Puppy Paul's duty now is to tell the other two that, that Wham is out of his base. Not only because he's marching in, like, yeah, yeah, distract Wham, make him come back, but the whole logic is like, Wham is committing a lot on the east side, so this should be the moment where you can simply go in. People asking about BC's king, we already discussed this. No, the king is gone. So if you GG, call, like, if you call GG and leave like that, there's no way for someone to get the extra pop cap. Seems like a very big problem. And. I know what people are going to say. When you get in the competitive environment, you're playing for points. There's no way that someone is going to just like GG out early. There is, if they see that the person who's going to kill them is their biggest competitor, because you're removing points from your opponent by doing that, right? Now, obviously, you can make kind of executive calls on, on like, you know, who got to kill. But it does you know, just mean that you're going to have to, like, give extra adminning in that regard. I think the better approach is just to say players cannot. GG call, cool. they have to have their king die to someone. Let's focus on other things though. Let's focus back on the game because it looks like the biggest sort is coming. Donai! He got the tip off. He got the info. That is a hundred elite rune knights. And they're in. And the Karaks. Someone kick up the Pirates of the Caribbean soundtrack. It's time. Not that many made it through. <laughs> you think you got enough of them, guys? Is it me or the Karaks not killing wolves quick enough because they're attacking everything else? Wow, 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 wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, well, wow, well, wow. Well. That's the depressing version of the song. I think that's what we've got right now. I, he might still have enough here. If it wasn't for the park shit. No! Just go in. It's, it's do or die core. You've got nine tower range. Just pound the building now. How has this not worked? How is this unit still this bad? Carrots. Where are the villagers right now? Wham needs to pull him, he needs to pull him ASAP. This might be closer than it has any right being. Three characters left, made that two. One of them's not even firing. Cool, he can't do it. The Cathedral of St. Thomas stands. But where there is a will, there is a way. There is an opening, there's an opportunity. Walls have been breached. Eco has been sacrificed. Wham, he had to bleed everything to stay alive like this. His food is gone. 
He has 36 villagers left. Although Karak's may not have been able to finish it, someone else might. In fact, Kor has so many more ships coming. He might still get the snipe on the lamb on the, the wonder here. Alternatively, and now this is just a crazy thought. Like what if you just ignore the wonder and the park ship? It's a bold move. But it's one that might open itself up. That is still a lot of knights. 94 elite raw knights are on the way. Rams have broken through the wall. Now, if this gets communicated, it's going to be a uh, immediate flooding. The Rams are heading straight for the bark shit. Now, check this. This is cool from, from Puppy Paw. Down but not out. This is enough troops that if he rams through the bark shit, he can just finish off the king. I think the key here is you need a garrison inside of the, the Rams to stand a chance in hell. Barracks have been blocked by a rewall and massacre of villages. There's no way Core gets to participate in this anymore. And in fact, the Rams actually are going after the Cathedral of St. Thomas instead. Villages are being repaired, uh, pulled to repair here. Second wave is coming in. I think this is going to be enough, ladies and gentlemen, from Poppy Paw. An unexpected turn in the Caitlyn and Abel story, as Poppy Paw is the one to middle finger his brother. It's very important I put the word middle in there. And now, not only will he just give him the middle finger, he might give him the full fist to the face. Full knife to the gut, because that Barkshire is not going to last long. And, and check this. Donna is nowhere to be seen. Poppy Paw, he's going to do it. He gets the kill. And Poppy Paw finds himself with a big booster on the pop cap. Now, what can he do with it? Because remember, the Mongol Empire was crushed, crumpled. But maybe it's rebuilt enough. Check what's been happening back at home. Mass Ram's been prepped. Puppy Paw has plenty of food and gold in the bank. He can prep an army. There's an opportunity to take out Donati because Donati... Okay, I was about to say that he's pop cap locked somewhere else, but luckily for him, uh, Core's going to help him with that. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Any pirates of character? Come on, guys. Get on board with it. I don't know how you'd sing it in the chat. Just put Dun Dun in the chat. Probably look like you're singing Star Wars. This is the type of uh, naval fleet that that real life France always wished they had. Good God. <laughs> that is 26 carats. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. Uh, 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 pardon me, let me come for uh, uh, Pardon, pardon, excuse moi. Oui, oui, uh, baguette too big, uh, la mi fru, please. C'est la magnifique, merci. Parfois. Right, I think that's enough for uh, stereotypical French words to use for one thing. So, cool. Is it time for a wonder? I think it is. And I think that this is just a GG win. Look, there you have Poppy Paul. His plans were very clear, but he has to change course. No longer can he go for Donati. Donati. He hasn't got much gold income. That last army we saw that breached Wham's base. That was premium, baby. That was 100 elite knights. Check the count now, down to 44. These guys are going the way of the samurai. That's a problem. From a from an effective HP standpoint, much less tanky. And your production is nowhere near Core's base. And Core, by the way, has inadvertently found himself with the best unit to defend a wonder. <laughs> I can't believe it. The characters are actually not a meme chat. The characters are the winning factor here. There is, the, how do you cross? <laughs> you can't. Oh my God, how has this worked out? It almost looked like a meme when you saw Core double down on more characters after the walls got breached. But but no folks, this, this, was, the, this was the genius of Core. He said, Guys, I'm going to build this siege to get through. Okay, I'm going to build characters to get through because there's siege as well. And everyone was like, okay, not suspicious at all. When he shows up with 30 characters, you're probably like, ah, oh, and he won't be a threat after we deal with Wham because, like, you know, there's only a small river in this game. That small river goes all the way across the map. And guess who uh, is sitting on their own on the left side of the map? 
Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy has the freest win imaginable. If I am puppy poor, I just kill Don Arty. And in fact, Don Arty's doing exactly that. He beats him to the punchline. <laughs> I should have bloody known. Don Artie comes and finishes what he started a long time ago. He says, I'll use the pop cap better than you. He does have a 50 pop cap advantage, but I mean, I, I don't. I don't see how you can test Carrick's here. I really, really don't. Let me see if I can find my fast forward button. Did I set one up? I don't know if I did. Do we fast forward this a bit? Because I, I, I don't know. I, maybe I should have more faith in Arty. Now, Arty's trying to flame me. Because he wants to go for the, for the Sacred Site victory. Now, that is a fair point. There is only two here. But, as I learned yesterday, Arty, with the BS of Carrox, they have quite a bit of range. Well, instead of engaging your brain, you might want to engage your siege, my friend. I'm, I'm actually curious to see whether they'll be able to reach here. I think you can maybe just about sit on the sacred site without getting your face walled off. Maybe. Although, if if I'm core, I just... Oh, that's a horrible thought. I'm sorry, core. Uh, if I'm core, I just get a cannon emplacement, right? Oh. Can he bait him here? Oh my god, actually, I just realized this isn't your keep. This is grief keep. I, I actually think you get sniped here. Right? You get forced to fight under the character, then you die after. He actually gets him! Now who needs to engage their brain? Should have brought 50 of these guys. Oh no. <laughs> I mean, it was a good idea for Marty. If Core didn't have enough ships to start his own private trading company, uh, this could have worked. But there's simply not enough siege here. And you're on the clock now, my friend. You've got less than a minute. I I, I don't even... Wh where is... Where's the... Where's the priest? This is the most futile attempt to break in I've seen. But it really is all he can do at this stage. It's going to cover the monk for the time being, but I don't know if it's going to cover him long enough. I think that there might even be a lot of spearmen left to in to just kill off the, the monk, the poor guy. Oh my dear god. It truly is mode on this dance floor. And that block out. Core understands. He just needs to buy a few more seconds. Six. Five. It's not going to be quick enough. Core with that Spearman pull guarantees that there is no option left for Don Arty. It was an admirable attempt. But the Sacred Site is going to lock in too late. And I agree, there is no way you could have won two versus one. I didn't criticize your move on the Poppy pool. I don't, I don't know why you're getting so defensive on it, but I understood it. And the Sacred Site was a nice idea, but... Ah, oh, character. <laughs> cool, this is like my job here is done. Insta deletes the characters, moves into a land army. Oh, an admirable attempt though. I guess he's now checking if there's one final way in. Obviously, if he had God Vision like us, he'd just call GG. As Core has created the Magano line. <laughs> I love that he actually keeps a decent amount of characters just to prevent any sort of cheesy crossing opportunity with transport ships. But yeah, th this is truly over. And what's that? I just feel like you don't think in solutions. I feel like you don't win, I. Okay, there we go. I'm sorry. We're going to flame each other. We can do it. It's not about thinking in solutions, sir. It's about... And it's hating the story, telling the narrative. I agree, it was a good idea with the sacred sites, but it was always going to be a, a long shot. Core just played this perfectly. We talked about very early on in the game, him just having a, a beautiful position. And 
you see it coming into true fruition here. The back far, uh, the back fish that always kept him supplied. The starting resources were absurd, right? He had double gold vein, stone, two relics, double deer stack, fishing access on the waterfront. I mean, the moment that Kalp was removed from the game, I think the only person who can contest core was going to be uh, Wham. But despite Wham's pretty base, which doesn't look so pretty anymore, there was nothing he could do. I see, like, I think back that was the critical moment. Like, I, I wonder if Wham genuinely thought RT was going to die to Core. If he waited for confirmation, it's risky because Core might just rush the wonder, but it at least ensures that you're not up against free players. And really big shout out to Pugpaw there. Actually, the breach through the wall came in clutch in the end because no one else was breaching this except him, right? And that allowed the flood through between him and RT and Sync. Aye, aye, aye. I guess he's just reluctant to give it over now. <laughs> but um still wondering like what happened with the, the points though. So because I feel like did did they definitely did assassinate. Yeah, so like if you do surrender, you generally just don't get the pop cap. Like, th this is my biggest take like a uh, takeaway from this, like looking forward. I hope the players are forced to like stick. They can't surrender. They have to lose their king. Because like that. I don't know if that would have changed much about the game, right? Like, Poppy Paul would have had more pop cap, but he still would have been pressured by two players a long time. But, like, uh, it does feel pretty silly that a player can just avoid giving over 50 pop cap. And I think that is that is a potentially exploitable thing in a, uh, a point-based format as you move deeper into a tournament, where someone can just block a player from... This is their biggest competitor in terms of points overall from like taking the lead. The final yay clash to end the game. How cute with them. The one that will lead nowhere but death. GG gets called. Core will take the win.